Chapter Three of the Magic of Oz by L. Frank Baum. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Three. Two Bad Ones. Kiki turned around and saw a queer old man standing near. He didn't stand straight, for he was crooked. He had a fat body and thin legs and arms. He had a big round face with bushy white whiskers that came to a point below his waist, and white hair that came to a point on top of his head. He wore dull gray clothes that were tight-fitting, and his pockets were all bunched out as if stuffed full of something. "'I didn't know you were here,' said Kiki. "'I didn't come until after you did,' said the queer old man. "'Who are you?' asked Kiki. My name's Ruggedo. I used to be the Gnome King, but I got kicked out of my country, and now I'm a wanderer. What made them kick you out? inquired the high-up boy. Well, it's the fashion to kick kings nowadays. I was a pretty good king, to myself, but those dreadful Oz people wouldn't let me alone, so I had to abdicate. What does that mean? It means to be kicked out. But let's talk about something pleasant. Who are you, and where did you come from? I'm called Kiki Aru. I used to live on Mount Munch in the Land of Oz, but now I'm a wanderer like yourself. The Gnome King gave him a shrewd look. I heard that bird say that you transformed yourself into a magpie and back again. Is that true? Kiki hesitated, but saw no reason to deny it. He felt that it would make him appear more important. Well, yes, he said. Then you're a wizard. No, I only understand transformations, he admitted. Well, that's pretty good magic, anyhow, declared old Ruggedo. I used to have some very fine magic myself, but my enemies took it all away from me. Where are you going now? I'm going into the inn to get some supper and a bed, said Kiki. Have you money to pay for it? asked the gnome. I have one gold piece. Which you stole. Very good. And you're glad that you're wicked. Better yet. I like you, young man, and I'll go to the inn with you if you'll promise not to eat eggs for supper. Don't you like eggs? asked Kiki. I'm afraid of them. They're dangerous said Ruggedo with a shudder. All right, agreed Kiki. I won't ask for eggs. Then come along, said the gnome. When they entered the inn, the landlord scowled at Kiki and said, I told you I would not feed you unless you had money. Kiki showed him the gold piece. And how about you? asked the landlord, turning to Ruggedo. Have you money? I've something better answered the old gnome, and taking a bag from one of his pockets, he poured from it upon the table a mass of glittering gems, diamonds, rubies, and emeralds. The landlord was very polite to the strangers after that. He served them an excellent supper, and while they ate it, the high-up boy asked his companion, "'Where did you get so many jewels?' "'Well, I'll tell you,' answered the gnome. When those Oz people took my kingdom away from me, just because it was my kingdom and I wanted to run it to suit myself, they said I could take as many precious stones as I could carry. So I had a lot of pockets made in my clothes and loaded them all up. Jewels are fine things to have when you travel. You can trade them for anything. Are they better than gold pieces? asked Kiki. The smallest of these jewels is worth a hundred gold pieces such as you stole from the old man. Don't talk so loud, begged Kiki uneasily. Someone might hear what you're saying. After supper they took a walk together, and the former gnome king said, Do you know the shaggy man and the scarecrow and the tin woodman and Dorothy and Ozma and all the other Oz people? No, replied the boy. I have never been away from Mount Munch until I flew over the deadly desert the other day in the shape of a hawk. Then you've never seen the Emerald City of Oz? Never. 
Well, said the gnome, I knew all the Oz people, and you can guess I do not love them. All during my wanderings I have brooded on how I can be revenged on them. Now that I've met you, I can see a way to conquer the land of Oz and be king there myself, which is better than being king of the gnomes. How can you do that? inquired Kiki Aru, wonderingly. Never mind how. In the first place, I'll make a bargain with you. Tell me the secret of how to perform transformations, and I will give you a pocket full of jewels, the biggest and finest that I possess. No, said Kiki, who realized that to share his power with another would be dangerous to himself. I'll give you two pocketfuls of gems, said the gnome. No, answered Kiki. I'll give you every jewel I possess. No, 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 said Kiki, who was beginning to be frightened. Then, said the gnome with a wicked look at the boy, I'll tell the innkeeper that you stole that gold piece, and he will have you put in prison. Kiki laughed at the threat. Before he can do that, said he, I will transform myself into a lion and tear him to pieces, or into a bear and eat him up, or into a fly, and fly away where he could not find me. Can you really do such wonderful transformations? asked the old gnome, looking at him curiously. Of course, declared Kiki. I can transform you into a stick of wood in a flash, or into a stone, and leave you here by the roadside. The wicked gnome shivered a little when he heard that, but it made him long more than ever to possess the great secret. After a while, he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you will help me to conquer Oz and to transform the Oz people, who are my enemies, into sticks or stones, by telling me your secret, I'll agree to make you the ruler of all Oz, and I will be your prime minister and see that your orders are obeyed. I'll help do that, said Kiki, but I won't tell you my secret. The gnome was so furious at this refusal that he jumped up and down with rage and spluttered and choked for a long time before he could control his passion. But the boy was not at all frightened. He laughed at the wicked old gnome, which made him more furious than ever. Let's give up the idea, he proposed, when Ruggedo had quietened somewhat. I don't know the Oz people you mentioned, and so they are not my enemies. If they've kicked you out of your kingdom, that's your affair, not mine. Wouldn't you like to be king of that splendid fairyland? asked Ruggedo. Yes, I would, replied Kiki Aru. But you want to be king yourself, and we would quarrel over it. No, said the gnome, trying to deceive him. I don't care to be king of Oz, come to think it over. I don't even care to live in that country. What I want first is revenge. If we can conquer Oz, I'll get enough magic then to conquer my own kingdom of the gnomes, and I'll go back and live in my underground caverns, which are more homelike than the top of the earth. So here's my proposition. Help me conquer Oz and get revenge, and help me get the magic away from Glinda and the wizard, and I'll let you be king of Oz forever afterward. I'll think it over, answered Kiki and that is all he would say that evening. In the night, when all in the inn were asleep but himself, old Ruggedo the gnome rose softly from his couch and went into the room of Kiki Aru the high up and searched everywhere for the magic tool that performed his transformations. Of course, there was no such tool, and although Ruggedo searched in all the boy's pockets, he found nothing magical whatever. So he went back to his bed and began to doubt that Kiki could perform transformations. Next morning he said, Which way do you travel today? I think I shall visit the Rose Kingdom, answered the boy. That is a long journey, declared the gnome. 
i shall transform myself into a bird said kiki and so fly to the rose kingdom in an hour then transform me also into a bird and i will go with you suggested ruggedo but in that case let us fly together to the land of oz and see what it looks like kiki thought this over pleasant as were the countries he had visited he heard everywhere that the land of oz was more beautiful and delightful the land of oz was his own country too and if there was any possibility of his becoming its king he must know something about it while kiki the high up thought ruggedo the gnome was also thinking the boy possessed a marvelous power and although very simple in some ways he was determined not to part with his secret however if ruggedo could get him to transport the wily old gnome to oz which he could reach in no other way he might then induce the boy to follow his advice and enter into the plot for revenge which he had already planned in his wicked heart there are wizards and magicians in oz remarked kiki after a time they might discover us in spite of our transformations not if we are careful ruggedo assured him ozma has a magic picture in which she can see whatever she wishes to see but ozma will know nothing of our going to oz and so she will not command her magic picture to show where we are or what we are doing glinda the good has a great book called the book of records in which is magically written everything that people do in the land of oz just the instant they do it then said kiki there is no use our attempting to conquer the country for glinda would read in her book all that we do and as her magic is greater than mine she would soon put a stop to our plans i said people didn't i retorted the gnome the book doesn't make a record of what birds do or beasts it only tells the doings of people so if we fly into the country as birds glinda won't know anything about it two birds couldn't conquer the land of oz asserted the boy scornfully no that's true admitted ruggedo and then he rubbed his forehead and stroked his long pointed beard and thought some more ah now i have the idea he declared i suppose you can transform us into beasts as well as birds of course and can you make a bird a beast and a beast a bird again without taking human form in between certainly said kiki i can transform myself or others into anything that can talk there's a magic word that must be spoken in connection with the transformation and as beasts and birds and dragons and fishes can talk in oz we may become any of those we desire to however if i transformed myself into a tree i would always remain a tree because then i could not utter the magic word to change the transformation i see i see said ruggedo nodding his bushy white head until the point of his hair waved back and forth like a pendulum that fits in with my idea exactly now listen and i'll explain to you my plan we'll fly to oz as birds and settle in one of the thick forests in the gillikin country there you will transform us into powerful beasts and as glinda doesn't keep track of any of the doings of beasts we can act without being discovered but how can two beasts raise an army to conquer the powerful people of oz inquired kiki that's easy but not an army of people mind you that would be quickly discovered and while we are in oz you and i will never resume our human forms until we've conquered the country and destroyed glinda and ozma and the wizard and dorothy and all the rest and so have nothing more to fear from them it is impossible to kill anyone in the land of oz declared kiki it isn't necessary to kill the oz people rejoined ruggedo i'm afraid i don't understand you objected the boy 
what will happen to the oz people and what sort of an army could we get together except of people i'll tell you the forests of oz are full of beasts some of them in the faraway places are savage and cruel and would gladly follow a leader as savage as themselves they have never troubled the oz people much because they had no leader to urge them on but we will tell them to help us conquer oz and as a reward we will transform all the beasts into men and women and let them live in the houses and enjoy all the good things and we will transform all the people of oz into beasts of various sorts and send them to live in the forests and the jungles that is a splendid idea you must admit and it's so easy that we won't have any trouble at all to carry it through to success will the beasts consent do you think asked the boy to be sure they will we can get every beast in oz on our side except a few who live in ozma's palace and they won't count end of chapter three